Hello everyone, welcome to our channel, where we take a trip down memory path to explore the things that made the 1970s a unique and unforgettable era. Today we'll be recalling about the activities and experiences that were once a significant part of every kid's life back then, but have now become leftovers of the past. So, grab your time-traveling hats, and let's dive into the 1970s things that kids no longer do. Let's get started. It recalls about an era of unrestricted outdoor play, bike rides without helmets, and the absence of safety nets on trampolines. The school days of metal lunch pails, minimal parental involvement, and teachers applying mercurochrome without signed disclaimers are contrasted with today's more careful approach. The video suggests memories of birthday parties featuring hot dogs, soda, and games with actual sharp objects. Weekends were characterized by cartoons, sugary cereal, and neighborhood adventures, free from iPads and screen time. Family dinners were sacred and chores held as much importance as homework. Grocery store trips were thrilling with carts lacking seat belts and only one type of milk. Now we explore some 1970s things and details that kids no longer do. Number 1. No helmets when riding our bicycles. Today's children live in a world of extreme protection, with parents overly concerned about safety, obvious and abundant hand sanitizer and mandatory bicycle helmets. In the 70s, wearing a helmet was unheard of, and doing so would lead to mockery and social isolation. The shift reflects a stark contrast, where current collective norms deem helmetless biking as neglectful parenting, highlighting the evolving perceptions of safety and parenting practices over the years. Number 2. Riding in the back of our pickup truck. Affectionately recalling about childhood, I valued riding in the back of a truck at 55 miles per hour with the dog and wind in our hair. However, such practices are now strictly forbidden. While driving in Mississippi, I was stopped and warned for having friends in the back of my pickup, highlighting the shift in safety regulations and attitudes, even in traditionally more lenient regions. Number 3. No seat belts. Cars in the 70s had lap belt style seat belts, but few people, including those I knew, bothered to wear them. Contrastingly, today, strict laws mandate seat belt usage, with potential fines for non compliance. Many cities display signs at their entrances, indicating the community's adherence to or violation of seatbelt laws, emphasizing the significant shift in attitudes and legal enforcement regarding this safety measure over the years. Number 4. No car seats. In the past, car seats for children existed but were rarely used. Mothers often held the child or sat between parents without seatbelts. Today, laws mandate child seats in cars, paralleling seatbelt legislation. Non-compliance is illegal reflecting the modern understanding of the risks associated with neglecting safety measures like seat belts and child seats. The contrast highlights an evolving awareness and legal framework prioritizing the protection of both adults and children in vehicles. Number 5. Being able to trick or treat unattended at night. Halloween, a highlight for children rivaled only by Christmas, once involved unattended adventures through the neighborhood, knocking on strangers' doors for free candy, a seemingly risky attempt. Safety wasn't a concern, the focus was on costumes and free treats. Contrastingly, today's Halloween is supervised, with parents accompanying children during daylight hours, diluting the spontaneous thrill. Some opt for mall trick-or-treating, further distancing from the carefree spirit of the past. The evolution reflects heightened safety awareness, as children now navigate Halloween under parental guidance, a departure from the unsupervised, candy-centric escapades of pasts. Before proceeding further, make sure to subscribe to this channel for more exciting and informative videos. Number 6. Outdoor Adventures In the 1970s, children experienced an era of unchecked outdoor freedom, embracing sun-soaked adventures and the simple joys of neighborhood play. Riding bikes without helmets, climbing trees, and playing hide-and-seek until the streetlights waved the end of the day were the norm. Unsupervised play and street games like Kick the Can and Stickball transformed ordinary streets into unprepared playgrounds, fostering companionship and unstructured fun. Climbing trees was an abundant activity, connecting adventurous souls with nature. Today, the longing of these carefree times contrasts sharply with the structured digital era, where children's outdoor exploration often occurs through screens rather than the tangible embrace of the great outdoors. The 1970s symbolized a time of self-discovery, companionship, and the thrill of uncharted exploration. Number 7. Saturday Morning Cartoons Saturday mornings were a sacred time for kids in the 1970s. No school, just a bowl of sugary cereal in front of the television, eagerly waiting for their favorite cartoons. 
From Scooby-Doo to the Smurfs, these animated adventures were a staple of childhood that today's kids might find hard to believe existed. Number 8. Vinyl Records and Cassette Tapes In the 1970s, music was a tangible experience as kids gathered around record players, carefully placing needles on vinyl records or spent hours crafting the perfect mixtape on cassettes. The thrill of flipping tapes to the B-side or creating personalized playlists remains a sentiment lost on today's digital generation. Simultaneously, the streets of the 1970s were vibrant playgrounds, posting now-vanished outdoor street games. Kick the Can and Stickball transformed ordinary streets into impromptu playgrounds, fostering a sense of community and carefree play. Sadly, these once-thriving games have become wounded of a modern era dominated by screens and organized activities leaving the streets silent and a testament to the regretful charm of a bygone era. Number 9. Outdoor Street Games In the 1970s, neighborhood streets were vibrant playgrounds for kids, offering entertainment through hopscotch, jump rope, and sidewalk chalk art. Laughter resonated as children embraced the simplicity of these timeless games before the digital age. The era's golden age of outdoor street games raised solidarity and creativity. Kick the Can, with its strategic hiding and suspenseful chases and stickball, transforming streets into unarranged ball fields, defined the era. Sadly, these analog street games have become relics, casualties of changing times and increased urbanization. Today's kids lean towards digital entertainment, leaving the cherished memories of 1970s outdoor play to those who reveled in the joy of unstructured fun on neighborhood streets. That's all for today. And there you have it some of the 1970s things that kids no longer do. It's a trip down memory way that reminds us of the simplicity and charm of a former era. Let us know in the comments which of these activities you remember fondly or which ones you wished today's kids could experience. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to join us for more informative content. Thanks for tuning in.